Hey everyone, it's Tony. We're here outside one of the polling locations here in Austin, Texas, trying to give you just a little bit of a preview before the major event tomorrow, which of course is the midterm uh, elections. We got a lot of key races across the United States that we're following. Uh, as you can see here, though, it's a little bit quiet, and that is because early voting uh, actually ended last Friday. So no one is allowed to actually be voting uh, today, but the polls are going to be open tomorrow starting at 7 in the morning, running until uh, seven at night heading into these midterms here in Texas. There was uh, this expectation that there was going to be very high voter turnout, especially high for a midterm election, which traditionally does not uh, bring a lot of voters out to the uh, the ballot box. But the final numbers showing, at least for early voting, when the majority of people do actually vote, uh, that those numbers are way, way down from 2018. So this year, early voting. So these are people that are casting their ballots by mail or that are rocking up to a polling place uh, like this, that uh, just 31 percent of registered voters have cast their ballots so far this year. That is compared to 40 percent back in 2018. Uh, and they're now expecting that the entire voter turnout is just going to be around 35 percent of eligible voters. That would be down from 53 percent in 2018. So probably the big question that you're asking is, well, who does that benefit? Does that benefit the Democrats? Does that benefit the Republicans? And it's really going to depend where those voters are that are staying at home. And what we've seen here in Travis County, uh, which is uh, traditionally a bluer part uh, of Texas, is that uh, we have seen voter turnout down by quite a lot. So that is perhaps not a good sign for uh, Democratic hopefuls, uh, particularly Beto O'Rourke. You guys may recognize uh, that name. He uh, ran against Ted Cruz, narrowly lost to him uh, in the 2018 elections. He also ran an unsuccessful uh, campaign to try and be the Democratic nominee for 2020 uh, presidential race. There was uh, hope earlier in the year that uh, he would actually maybe be able to overcome the incumbent Republican governor, Greg Abbott, who is now running for his third term. And really, the race between them really, really narrowed after the Uvalde shooting, which 21 people were killed inside the Robb Elementary School, and also after the Supreme Court overturned uh, abortion rights. Of course, here in Texas, abortion rights have been extremely uh, limited for over a year now, so well before that uh, June decision by the Supreme uh, Court. But uh, the race had narrowed down to just five percentage points, but is now spread back open in benefit of Greg Abbott by about 10 or 11 uh, points, percentage points, according to the uh, latest poll. The other key races that we are looking at here in Texas are in the southern part of the state, really along that U.S.-Mexico border. In the 28th uh, congressional district, you have Henry Cuellar, who is the incumbent Democrat in the political fight of his career uh, because uh, this is a seat that since it was created in 1993 has always been held by a Democrat might be uh, thinking this is a little crazy for Texas, right? A very Republican state. Here you have this district along the border that has traditionally been very Democratic. He now stands a chance of losing uh, that seat to the uh, GOP nominee, um, Cassie Garcia. She used to work for U.S. Senator Ted Cruz. He's backing her in this race. So that's one of the races that we're really going to be paying attention to uh, tomorrow. There's also a couple of other districts that are in the southern part of Texas that everybody is going to be watching because these are also traditionally Democratic places that appear to have a chance to flip Republican uh, for the first time. And what we've seen in the last couple of days is this all hands on deck approach from Democrats coming down here to Texas to try and get the word out to voters to get out to vote, but also to support the Democrats. You had uh, the first lady, Jill Biden, out in Houston uh, over the weekend. Today, on Monday, we have the former U.S. President Bill Clinton in Laredo, Texas, which is right there at the U.S.-Mexico border, um, out there stumping for Henry Cuellar. When it comes to the issues that are most important for Texas voters this year, it's pretty much what we've seen across the United States. We're talking about the economy, so uh, inflation, high gas prices, the cost of living in general. This is a big issue for voters. Also, uh, we have gun rights. This is a very pro-gun state here in uh, in Texas, so uh, there had been a lot of talk after that Uvalde massacre that perhaps uh, the you know lawmakers here in Texas should be called 
called back for a special session so that they could potentially raise the age to buy um, a semi-automatic up to 21. That didn't happen. Uh, and another big issue, of course, is going to be abortion. Like I mentioned before, Texas has had very, very, very uh, tough, stringent uh, abortion laws on the books since uh, September of 20. 21 and this is an issue for voters really in the blue parts of the state like here uh, in Austin. So these uh, are the things that we're going to be looking for. The other thing that we're going to want to be paying attention to tomorrow is uh, where these election monitors are located. So anybody out here trying to do some last minute campaigning for somebody like Elva uh, over here or for Beto O'Rourke or anything, they're going to have to stay on this side of where the polling area is because we have new voting laws in in place now after the 2020 election that has uh, pushed out any sort of campaigning further away from the polling station so that uh, people aren't either um, intimidated or harassed when they're coming uh, up there to make their votes or try to be persuaded when they are. Another thing that has changed um, in just the last year is that the Texas legislature has actually uh, passed a, co a controversial voting bill into law, which would give partisan poll workers increased autonomy inside these polling places and they're going to have uh, free movement. This law uh, also expanded the state's ability to pursue criminal sanctions against election officials. Um, some people saying that, you know, this is really just a form of voter intimidation. And we actually have in Harris County, which includes Houston, which is the biggest city in Texas, uh, some of the lawmakers there asking for federal election monitors to be sent in to make sure that there is no uh, voter intimidation taking place. So these are the things that we're going to be paying very close attention to tomorrow. Uh, also, those key races, again, we might have an upset along the southern border. We're going to be out here all day. We're going to be reporting for you guys both online, on television. So make sure to stick with us.